All right, let's dive into the fascinating world of pemmican, the ultimate survival food that has stood the test of time. Imagine a food that sustained indigenous peoples, fur traders, and explorers on their long journeys through harsh terrains. Pemmican is not just any food. It's a symbol of resilience and ingenuity in the face of adversity. Now, let's explore the concept of making pemmican with freeze-dried meat. This method offers unparalleled benefits for long-term storage and nutrient preservation, making it a top choice for survival situations or outdoor adventures. By combining the power of freeze-dried meat with traditional pemmican techniques, we can create a superfood that packs a punch in terms of nutrition and longevity. Longevity, longevity, whatever that is. But here's a challenge. How do we prepare nutritious and shelf stable food that can sustain us through the toughest of times? This is where pemmican shines, offering a solution to the age old problem of food preservation and portability in extreme conditions. With pemmican, you can have peace of mind knowing that you have a reliable source of sustenance wherever you go. Time for the key moment we've all been waiting for in the process of making pemmican. It's starting with the freeze dried beef. Now here I have about 20 pounds of 8119. My apologies. Here we have an 8119 ground beef. The leaner the better, but I don't think it really makes that much difference because you're freeze drying it. And then you just add more fat into it. So leaner the better, but it doesn't have to be a prime fat free cut. All right, so we have the large freeze dryer that has five trays, and we're going to split 20 pounds between the five trays. And it takes a couple days for the freeze drying process to work, and you can use a dehydrator. I've done that, it takes a little longer. You gotta turn, rotate the trays every so often, there's a little more steps involved. You can also probably just buy pre-freeze dried meat. If you buy pre-freeze dried meat, you save the cost of the freeze dryer, but you still pay for the cost of the freeze dryer because they're charging that in the freeze dried meat. But it's a good way to test some while you wait for a freeze dryer or decide if you want to go freeze dryer, air dried. I know you don't want to cook it. All the recipes I've found says don't get the temperature of the meat over 170. That means it's not sterilized, but you're not trying to cook the meat. You're just trying to dry the meat. That's where a freeze dryer works really good. So we're going to go ahead and get after this. We're gonna divide it out, like I said, throw it in the freeze dryer, and we'll move on to the next step. So stick around. All right, so if you're new to freeze drying, you don't want to have your product you're freeze drying much more than an inch or so thick, because then it might get too thick to adequately freeze dry all the way through. So I just kind of mush this into these trays. They're also like lids. You can buy them on the Harvest Right website. You want to pack it pretty consistently. I used to, I started out trying to make neat rows with like a jerky uh, gun and trying to do all that, but I found that you're just putting it in a blender after this and you're going to blend it up and powderize it as best as possible. So it really doesn't matter what it looks like going on the freeze dryer tray. As long as you pay attention to how thick it is. You get too thick, it won't freeze dry all the way. And I usually run an extra, I don't know, 12 hours or so on the freeze dry cycle just to make sure that there is no moisture. And then obviously, you know, you, you're gonna check it and make sure that it's moisture free, which is usually, I mean, you don't have to buy fancy equipment for it, just feel it you'll be able to know. So we're just gonna finish packing all this in here. And we're gonna go put it in the freeze dryer and we'll get it going. So on to the next step. All right, 
while we're waiting for that beef to finish freeze drying so we can powderize it, we are gonna go over the rest of the ingredients because we gotta have them all gathered up because you want it all to go smooth on the day that you're putting it all together. This is a couple day process. It's not something that happens overnight because it takes a lot of time to dry the beef. So in the meantime, let's go over the rest of it. You got, the recipe calls for four tablespoons of spices. I put in six. I like the extra flavor in the pemmican. And I like to use, right now I'm using the uh, Bearded Butcher's Black Seasoning. I really like it. It gives it a good, good taste. I ordered some Chipotle seasoning to put in there, which I think will be really good. I wouldn't go light on the spices. You're not gonna regret it. Just salted pemmican tastes like a meat bar, to be fair. If you were hungry, you'd probably eat really good, but I would put some spices in there. You're also gonna want three tablespoons of salt. I use a fine grain, I think it's like an F grain sea salt. Don't, I don't think you want to use iodized salt. I have not read that you shouldn't, but go with high quality salt because it's going to make or break you. Just like your high quality spices. Pick what you want, but for the thousand gram batch that we're going for, you're going to want about four to six tablespoons and then taste it, test it. We'll show you when we mix it together. The next ingredient I put in that they don't call for in the recipe is honey. I put one cup of honey in each thousand grams of beef towel. I do that because usually you put fruit in it, but I find I like the honey better because it gives it a little more sweetness and it also gives you the added benefit of antibacterial properties of the honey. Now you want to use raw honey, you don't want to boil it, you want to keep it as raw as possible so you're just heating it up to melt it. You'll see that in a sec. And the final ingredient, beef tallow. This stuff isn't really cheap. I think for a five gallon bucket from US Wellness Meats, I've always had fantastic luck with them. I'm not sponsored by them, but I'll put a link to their stuff below because you know it's hard to source five gallons of it that's good quality. And this stuff is as good quality as I've ever seen. I've tried the smaller batches off Amazon and stuff like that. I think it's all mostly the same, but I like US Wellness Meats and it comes in a five gallon tub, about 180 bucks but you can do a lot of pemmican with it. So you only need a thousand grams per batch, or if you have 1200 grams of powder, you're gonna want 1200 grams of tallow. And then I put the one cup of honey in addition to that, and I've never weighed that out, I've never bothered it, it's never made it excessively greasy, it's always like the freeze dried meat versus air dried meat, it's gonna absorb this really well. So there you have that. You have your tallow, your honey, salt and spices and next up we're going to ground the meat once it's finished freeze drying melt our tallow and we'll get going with this so stick around dryer is done, the meat is exceptionally dry, and we are just going to break it apart into chunks, fill up our food processor here, and that allows us to powderize it into a really fine, usable uh, consistency. So let's get it done. Almost there. It's just about done melting in the oven for the fat and honey. So we're going to go ahead and put in our dry powder with the spices and the salts into the food mixer so we can get ready for the final step of making the pepper. Everything's mixed and blended, and I took that stuff out of the oven before it was 100% just stupid hot and completely melted, because you don't have to wait that long. Once it's about a half to two thirds of the way melted, you can immersion blend it, and the heat from what is melted will melt the other stuff much faster, so you don't have to wait so long and get it so hot for mixing it with your pemmican. So 
Let's blend it in. And that's pretty much it for making pemmican. We are now we're just going to press it out into a nice block, compact it in here, make kind of give it a visual inspection, make sure we don't have any dry spots. But the only other thing we got to do is let this dry or cool completely. And once it is cooled 100%, we'll flip it over, knock it out of the tray here, and slice it into chunks. All right, we have eight solid pounds of pemmican. It's plenty solid to cut and cut into our one pound block. So let's go ahead and knock it out here. Comes right out. That's a great thing. No pipe. A little piece here. I'll try some. Mmm. The good stuff. Oh, really ain't bad. All right, so we're gonna divide it into even blocks, which for me, conveniently, comes out right about the width of my hand. All right, final step here. Pemmican only has four things that can make it go bad. Heat in a combination with moisture, oxygen, or sunlight. Sunlight will cause the fat to go rancid, Moisture will obviously cause bacteria to grow. And those things are what I'm protecting us here. I'm putting a desiccant pack to absorb moisture, which there should be zero moisture in these at all. But given that I'm making these long-term storage, I want to make sure that there's no chance of these going bad. So when I open it up in 10, 15 years from now, I don't have any problems if I want to eat it. And then oxygen absorbers. You pull the oxygens out of these Mylar bags, the oxygens, the oxygen out of these Mylar bags, it really does become almost an indefinitely storable item. Okay. Here it is, eight days worth of survival food. In conclusion, pemmican truly stands out as the ultimate survival food, offering a combination of long shelf life, high energy content, and simplicity of preparation. Whether you're planning for a wilderness expedition, or just looking to stock up your emergency supplies, pemmican is a reliable and versatile option that won't let you down when you need it the most. So what are you waiting for? Give pemmican a try at home and experience the benefits firsthand. Share your own survival food tips with us in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more exciting survival food recipes and tips. Stay prepared, Stay resilient and stay tuned for more adventures in the world of survival foods.